think the main importance is that we are endeavoring to restore the forest health to a very old forest that was able to escape the uh, milling mm -hmm. for such a long time and it's in an area that's very high profile in that it's at the end of Highway 1 and many visitors end, there, end up here and when they walk through our forest they can enjoy the sounds of the birds mm -hmm. and they can see lizards and other insects and uh, other types of wildlife that they couldn't see in 2008. Mm. Uh, it makes the whole echo experience a lot much more, that much more rewarding. And it gives a sense of accomplishment to our community and to all our volunteers that work here. And I think uh, it goes, makes a small effort toward uh, correcting the mistakes made by our forefathers, bringing pest animals into mm -hmm this country and decimating populations of beautiful native species and uh, every little bit that can be done to bring these species back so that we can enjoy it and New Zealand can be a little bit more like it was before man set foot here is well worth the price. Okay, why, why do we do what we do? Um, we've got a beautiful natural environment on our property and we want everybody to see it. And particularly we want school kids to be really enthused about it mm -hmm. and we want to get school kids outside enjoying nature just like Brian and I do. And there's some magnificent things to see in nature but you just need to, a little spark really to get them, get them enthused mm -hmm. and the preschool kids love it. Um, yeah, it's just a, a thing that we love to do. Yeah. And it brings a lot of people to our property. We can showcase what we're doing and show people how to do it and you know that's that's really all we're wanting to do. Some Roy Sloan from the Fjordan Wapiti Foundation. We um, undertake some community based voluntary programs in the Wapiti area of Fjordan National Park, um, which entails about 70 kilometres of predator line to protect the blue ducks and various other um, indigenous species and birds in the area. Um, we also um, run hunter management programs in the Wapiti area and um, which entails us to um, manage the, um, the animal numbers in the Wapiti area of Fjordland. So that's really, um, I guess we remove around about a thousand deer a year which um, helps balance fauna and flora in there so um, and also hunters are able to go in there with better quality animals to hunt because they're in lower numbers. We've been going for about uh, eight years now and um, I think over the eight years we've moved something like about 8,000 plus deer and numerous amounts of rats and stoats. So um, blue ducks are flourishing and so is the environment and so are the hunter numbers coming to fjord as recreation is a huge part of their business as well. And so I guess numerous amounts of money has been injected into the place from um, donations and um, sponsors over the years. We're probably into the millions of dollars now. Um, a lot of people don't seem to know a lot about us, but um, yeah, we operate in Fjordan and just get on with our business, I guess. Oh well, this is uh, the Tariri Reserve. We're right on the coast at one of the penguin landings. Uh, this is an area that Forest and Bird Society has um, uh, known and worked on since 1981 and uh, in those days this area was just being cleared uh, for farmland and we managed to find uh, that there were some penguins still hanging on in the land that was being cleared and there was a bit of bush still for them so we were able to uh, fence off a small area with the agreement of the farmer and later purchased a much larger area, uh, 60 hectares actually and so now we have uh, all the penguin habitat fenced off in this area and most of the time since then we've been uh, planting up to re-establish the forest uh, that was being cleared in the uh, late 70s and 80s and uh, our technique is to use flax plants for a start and then put in lots of little shrubs and things in between once the flaxes get up because the flaxes give the shrubs shelter and uh, we've 
just walked to an area where the, uh, the, the shrubs have grown into significant trees now and we've seen lots of dead or dying flax bushes underneath and it, it shows the, how, how well that system works. Uh, we get a lot of volunteers helping planting and uh, every year there's a volunteer planting day. People come down in uh, August usually, so it'll happen this year, and we'll be planting 500 trees and shrubs in amongst the flax. Uh, and uh, uh, the result has been pretty good. The birds themselves have uh, thrived. Their numbers have increased uh, after a uh, low point in 1995 when there was a fire did get into the reserve and actually killed quite a few of the penguins. Uh, our our uh, numbers have increased till now we have uh, just on 80 birds living in this reserve. And what is so exciting for us is that other things have started coming in too. Uh, little blue penguins particularly and uh, more latterly titi, uh, sooty shearwater and we've found them living in burrows just on the hillside just, uh, over here not far from us. Uh, not many but some and there's a good chance that it will increase. As long as we keep the predator control, which is something else we're doing, <laughs> uh, controlling stoats particularly but also rats and possums and uh, we're uh, being pretty successful in that. We've got nearly 40 traps uh, spread through this area and they're checked at least once a month uh, uh, and so we have a, a good program of maintaining that too. Uh, just recently we've added uh, to our area, the farmer gifted us an area to make our reserve a better shape and we've planted up another nine hectares of uh, flax at this stage but uh, we're starting to put uh, trees in that area starting from this year uh, too. So that's going to make it uh, an area of just over 70 hectares that will be protected for the penguins. Mm. OK, we do the Living Strings project at Dacre Hall where our girls, pippins, brownies and guides go out with leaders and families and plant trees. Why is it important? It um, teaches the girls about the environment, conservation and about just being part of the community and it always amazes me how five-year-olds can tell me how to plant a native tree exactly right and its botanical name, which I might not even know. <laughs> so to me they're learning so much by doing rather than sitting in a classroom. Well, it was, it was in the late 80s that uh, the idea was put forward that of all the spoil that was taken out of the Makawiwa um, scheme where, uh, to stop the rivers from flooding, was all the spoil that was growing a lot of weeds, mainly gorse and broom, and it was becoming quite a headache and a drain on funds to try and keep that gorse under control. That the idea was put forward that we planted in trees and um, to, kill, to kill or control the gorse and at the same time reap an income that we can then put back into, uh, into the Makariwa scheme for, for looking after the river. Makariwa River Liaison Committee are very keen for to have ratepayers take pride in their river, to be proud of it and to, uh, to make it pleasing for everyone to enjoy and at the same time serve the purpose of draining our land which is critical for the Makariwa area. Uh, well, uh, our theory behind the whole uh, recycling is to, uh, and our community hall is to have the community come together and share and uh, you know, be one. And uh, okay. try and sort of keep, keep everyone together. So looking after the planet as we go along and not leave too big a front print. <laughs> and Angie, you can say about the permaculture and what we're doing. Yes, well, uh, actually we all did the same permaculture course at different times, uh, a year apart, I think. Yep. And we're very interested to try what we learned. And so we did it here so everyone could share it, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, mm. want everybody to see what we're doing. and and learn that you don't necessarily have to no. dig a garden, you can produce stuff without it. Mm. Yep, yeah. And like the fruit trees, the whole idea is anybody can come and help themselves to spare rhubarb or gooseberries or black currants and, and if they want to come and join in with it, that's fine. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And maybe take, take what they learn and bring it back to their own garden and yeah, become self-sufficient.
Oh, take, take the power away from the big supermarket. That's right. <laughs> well, and just healthier too. And healthier. Healthier, yeah. 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 What you produce yourself has yeah. got to be good. Lovely to get fresh stuff out of the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Healthy Pretty body, good. healthy mind. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Otatara Land Care Group took over a roughly 15 hectare block from the Department of Conservation with a concession, and our job is to replant it all in native plants. It is quite a special area. The Bushy Point has been described as nationally significant, as it is one of only two areas left in the country where podocarp forest exists on sand dunes. Our project has been to form a forest link initially between the southern area of Bushy Point, which is regrowth, and an area of Tokara, um, slightly to the north. About two years ago we got that link established and the plants are now growing and our task now is to continue on around and clear up the rest of, or replant the rest of the area that we can. At the moment we have a three kilometre walk through here which is we maintain and it is used quite a lot by members of the public in bits and pieces and the area is really special I guess to me because I live right next door to it and a lot of people uh, it is very special to them too. They come in here and walk their dogs on a daily basis. It's quite a safe area. Uh, bring kids in here. Uh, there's a lot of school groups come through here, um, which uh, really encompasses one of the other land care group objectives of education as well too. So uh, having school groups through here has been really good. This year already we've had Southland Girls High School, um, James Hargist and uh, Tacoma from Washington State came through here as well, please. It's, it's, yeah, why is it special? It's special for well, those, especially those that come, to um, get together and talk about things. It's also special because one, uh, when we started off, we there was no one in town really organised to uh, pick up the commercial cardboard and newspapers and uh, we felt that we could uh, turn this in this paper into something that could be of value to community, local community and uh, also we could enjoy each other's company I suppose that was the way it was mm. and it's sort of gradually expanded now to the stage of um, going from about 50 tonne to uh, uh, the operation started in a very small way back in about 1997 until we came to the shed that we got here in 2003 and then really it was a bit like uh, it was getting out of control but uh, we're, and we're all getting older but uh, we were still uh, uh, enjoy doing it and it really gives us a thrill when we can provide, you know, amenities for the town. Of course, we're all volunteers, and uh, we enjoy the morning teas too, don't we? We sure do. Yeah. See, a lot of us are retired farmers too, which makes it so different. We didn't have anything to do when we came into Gorter when we retired, so this was a great chance to uh, do something for the community. Be able to still do our uh, get up in the morning as we usually can as farmers, and we start work here at half past seven, eight o'clock, and, and the companionship, and we're doing something good. Yeah. And that's what we want to do in the lines that we serve, and this time it's we serve the community and ourselves. So it's, uh, you know, I can't say enough about what it's done for the club and that. We've got this nest egg that we can put into big projects and do something major instead of it. And of course we've still got our little ones, but this is, brings everyone. We even have our meetings here now, so this is really the hub of our Pikiki lines. So it's all good. We're averaging about 900 tons a year now. And, uh, although we uh, are not getting quite as much newspaper, but it, it's a link to the community. And this is almost as Russell's saying, that it's the centre of the Lions Club, but it's the centre of um, the newspaper and cardboard collections. But, uh, yeah, we enjoy it. That's the main thing. Uh, some of the projects that we have supported, 
We've put uh, money into the Neurological Foundation. We've supported the hospital. Uh, and we also, last year we spent, uh, or gave grants amounting to 15,000 to 10 students, year 13 students. And the one thing we do appreciate is the um, support that we've had through the years from, well, we're fortunate enough to get uh, a grant from Environment Southland with the press in, and that really turned things around for us. And uh, the Gore District Council, their support, the Tower Licensing Trust, but all that support has been sufficient to uh, enable us to carry on on our own feet. But, uh, yeah, we love the job. Yeah, for sure. And wouldn't change it for a day.